What's up everybody? I have one more stock. It's called Apria Therapeutics. Uh, you can see uh, this stock got uh, punched in the face, so to speak, uh, a couple weeks ago. Lost about 80% of its value overnight. And, uh, you know, one of the most famous sayings, I believe Warren Buffett, you know, buy when there's blood on the streets or buy, uh, you know, buy when there's fear, buy on bad news. You know, all are trying to uh, point out the same concept, and that's that, you know, when something happens to a, a company that's very bad, um, you know, there's a reaction that's often disproportionate um, in terms of the stock price relative to the news as it affects the valuation of the company. So let's take a look at this Apria. Um, I think it's an interesting opportunity, certainly one to keep on your watch list. Um, so what is Apria doing? Uh, they're trying to develop a drug uh, that reactivates P53. And uh, from a scientific standpoint, uh, uh, the thesis is sound. Uh, P53 is by far the most important gene, uh, certainly in humans, at preventing cancer. Uh, we call it the guardian of the genome. It's the number one uh, most common gene that's found to be mutated in human cancers. Um, and this gene, long story short, uh, when DNA is mutated, when cells are under stress, um, uh, the, the body has a way of causing cells to commit suicide um, that uh, have a chance of developing into cancer. So the role of P53 is uh, to shut down uh, the cell cycle and uh, re reduce the uh, chance that this abnormal cell is going to copy and propagate its genetic errors and become cancer. So think of P53 as a protector of the genome, uh, a what's called a pro-apoptotic protein that causes cell suicide uh, when uh, cancer uh, has a good chance of developing. I love to tell this story. It's really cool. I just went teaching people about cancer. Uh, so it turns out elephants have somewhere between 8 and 40 uh, functional copies of this gene. <laughs> uh, you know, humans have two. And, you know, somewhere between 11 to, to 25 percent of humans are going to die of cancer, whereas less than 5% of elephants die from cancer. And that's despite, you know, they have, uh, they're much bigger, uh, they're much larger, they have much more cells in their body. So you would think, you know, in a comparable lifespan, you know, with, with how many cells they have and how big this animal is, they should develop cancer at a much higher rate than humans, right? just uh, uh, it's a, a probability that having so many more cells that are copied, dividing, multiplying, uh, they should be a setup for cancer, but they don't get cancer, at least certainly not in uh, the level that humans do. And you know one of the main reasons we think is because they have so many more copies of P53. So P53 is highly implicated in uh, tumor genesis, cancer development, uh, we know that, uh, again, most common mutations seen in human cancers, uh, we know that cancers that have a P53 mutation have poor prognosis. We see this essentially across the board in cancers, and uh, I think it's especially true, um, or at least especially easily to see anecdotally as an oncologist in blood cancers. So this company, Apria, uh, they're trying to develop a small molecule drug that reactivates P53 in cancers. So now they have this drug, uh, APR246, that has been their lead candidate. And they just recently published the results of a clinical trial in uh, P53 mutant myelodysplastic syndrome, which has poor prognosis and poor response uh, generally to our treatments. Uh, and they published the results of their phase three, and they weren't quite what they were hoping for. Uh, so uh, if we pull up you know, the news, 
um, the, they ra randomized 154 total patients to either azacitidine uh, with uh, their P53 restoration agent. Uh, half got the drug, half didn't. Everybody got azacitidine. And you can see that in the study results, the you know, the complete response rate in the patients that got the drug was 33%. In the group that did not get the drug, it was 22%. So it's about a 50% improvement in response rate. But, uh, and I'm not an expert in statistics, but the study did not meet uh, the threshold for uh, statistical significance. Uh, in, in order for the study to meet that threshold, this p-value should be 0 0.05 uh, or less. So they had a statistical, or sorry, they had a, a numerical advantage in their uh, trial in the study group, but it didn't quite meet the endpoint they were hoping for. And uh, you know that could have been because uh, they overestimated the uh, benefit of the drug. It could have been because they didn't uh, make the study large enough, but it didn't meet uh, the p-value. But there's some signal that it worked, um, but not enough signal that, that we can say uh, that this didn't happen, uh, this benefit wasn't by chance. Uh, so overnight, this company loses 80% of its value, goes from 25 bucks to five dollars, and uh, you know, kind of uh, the sky is falling for this company, or so to speak. But uh, interestingly, if you look at you know what's this company have on deck, uh, they have other indications they're studying uh, this drug in, and then look here, they have a second generation of this drug. Um, that uh, they think is a better form of it. Uh, and I just was just looking at uh, some of the description of the drug. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the pharmacokinetics may be a little different. It may be more potent, uh, more available uh, in circulation. But, you know, the kind of the take-home point is they were close uh, with this uh, clinical trial. Didn't quite meet its goal. They have other shots on goal with these other indications, and then uh, they you know, they have a completely <laughs> a completely separate drug that you know the company is uh, is putting their money is better. So you know this drug has a chance to accomplish eventually what uh, they were hoping for with APR two four six. So did the market overreact? It's hard to know, but uh, when a company loses 80% of its value overnight, uh, it's uh, you know one theory is that you know buying now, buy when there's blood on the streets, when there's bad news, is you're going to get a discount. You know, you know this was bad news for the company, but was it 80% of the value bad news? Probably not. So this is a company I would keep on my watch list, and you know there may be some more. A pullback. Maybe the company is going to lose another half of its uh, value from here and become a $50 million company uh, before uh, they get some good news in some of their other trials or with their uh, second generation drug. But certainly something that's enticing um, uh, to to bet on or uh, or take a stab at uh, because of possible market overreaction. All right, hope you enjoyed. Uh, everybody have a good day and long weekend.